Hey, what's up? It's your boy SK Visions, and today we have another video for you. Today I'll be showing you guys how to cut out ambient light in studio so you can expose for the photos properly. Today we have Chelsea, she's a photographer, and she'll be our test subject today. Um, we are tethering to Capture One. Capture One is the software that I use to see all my photos live. So I have a tether cable that I connect from my camera to my laptop. And Capture One shows me all the settings that I need, so that's why I'm sitting down right here. Instead of being behind the camera, I can see everything, I can control the settings from my computer. So this is a cool way to use Capture One, especially for a lazy photographer like me. What is ambient light? So ambient light is the light that is surrounding me right now in studio. We have the lights from the ceilings, we have the lights from the mirrors, we have even my videographer has a light right now aiming right at me. I do not want this light to affect my subject. So cutting out ambient light helps me to properly expose my subject so that when I add flash, I am in control at all times. So right now I have my settings pretty much all over the place. I have my ISO at 1000. I have my f-stop, which is my aperture, at 3.5, and I have my shutter speed at 1 over 10. So I'm just going to take a test subject so I can know where I'm at with this. All right? So we take, as you can see, it is very overexposed right now. We don't want that for, maybe it's something that you're going for, but I do not want that for what I am going for. So. I normally try to keep my ISO as low as possible in studio. The higher your ISO is the more grainy your photo gets. So I try to make sure I stick with a low ISO. For my f-stop, I try to keep my f-stop as low as possible. The lower your f-stop, which is the higher the f-stop number, the less light comes into your camera, less ambient light comes into your camera and I am able to keep everything in focus. And for the shutter speed, we have one tenth of a second, so it is very slow. It allows a lot of light to come into the camera. So you want to increase your shutter speed so that less light can enter the camera. Okay, so first I'm gonna adjust the ISO. I'm gonna go for 100. That's kind of like my go-to when shooting in studio. For my f-stop, I keep my f-stop around 8 to 11. That's like my sweet spot. And I know that everything will be in focus when I shoot that. And I shoot a lot of beauty, so I want the eyes to be in focus, the nose to be in focus, the mouth, everything, hair, doesn't matter. So I'm gonna go to f11, and then I'm gonna increase my shutter speed, and I am gonna go for one over, 160 and I'm gonna take a test shot all right it's dark you want to make sure that when you're exposing for ambient light you do not want to see anything on your screen your screen should be completely pitch black that's how you know that you've killed all the ambient light killed is your word yes <laughs> so you want to make sure you killed all the ambient light that way when you add flash you are in control of your life. Okay, now we're gonna add flash. I have my trigger on top of my camera and I make sure it's connected to my flash. I am gonna take a test shot with the flash. It is on a half power right now. Voila! As you can see, when we did not have any flash and we just had ambient light, we cut out all the light. You could not see her face, you could not see her body. And with one flick of the button on the trigger, man, she is beautifully exposed. We are in control of the light right now. We could move the light and enhance it properly, but we are not doing a lighting masterclass right now. So we just wanna make sure you guys understand that cutting out ambient light is extremely important to properly expose your model. Hope you guys enjoyed and learned anything from this. If you wanna see me use these techniques in an actual photo shoot, watch this video.